Okay, so the, the next bit of the videos is just about the, the finicky stuff in the workbook. It's, there's a lot of data in there and there's little bits and pieces all over the place. that It's hard to remember unless you link logic to it that I find. Um, <clears throat> now, some of the stuff about the jetties, which I've already draw, I've drawn up here, like who's got right of way to jetty, people get really confused about. So that's meant to be a river, that's your mountains, that's the ocean. So this is going up river. This is going downriver, okay? We've got a little jetty here. Boat A is going upriver, boat B is going downriver. Who's got right away? A. A has right away. The guy going upriver has right away. The guy going downriver needs to give way, okay? The way I remember this is the guy going upriver, you know, if you think if it rains, water runs down the mountains into the river out to sea. So the guy going upriver is going against the flow. He's going slower. His steering's better. Um, he is right away. The guy coming down with the flow, I mean, probably should come down anyway, come past the jetty, and then hook around and head up into the current if he's going to dock anyway. So that's how I remember it. The guy going into the flow has right away. The guy going down river uh, must give way. Okay. Now, there's a couple of others here as well, like... Um, one of them is, you know, let's say that's a jetty, this is the land, and I've got one boat coming in here and one boat coming in here. Who has right away? You know, some people think, oh, I've got to give way to my right, but in a jetty situation like this is different. This guy's closer to the jetty, this guy's obviously pushing in from somewhere. So the, this, this time the guy on the inside has right of way, okay, because he's closer to the jetty common sense really. Um, it's just that give way to the right thing confuses people a bit with that. But in a jetty situation when both of them are coming in, um, the inside boat has right away, the one closest to the jetty, which sort of makes common sense. And you know, if let's say there's two boats tied up, you know, who's got right away? Simple. The guy leaving first, <laughs> first in best dressed. Okay, so th there's another water skiing one that confuses people as well. If you if you think about it, there is logic to most of them. It's just finding it. So let's say we've got a beach here. You know, especially congested ski areas, there's specific pick up and drop off zones because it can get pretty hectic. So if I've got a you know a skier on the beach and he's got a rope. There's my boat wanting to go out, okay, and there's a there's another guy, you know, pretty much they all um, they all run anti-clockwise ski areas down here because um, that keeps them on the right. The only one I know that runs the other way is up in Kananara. They tend to do <laughs> do it a bit differently. Uh, they do it the other way, you know, clockwise. Which, but it, anyway. I'm getting sidetracked a bit. If we had a um, another boat wanting to drop off, you know, with his skiers underway, who has right away? The guy coming in or the guy going out? Logic says the guy on the beach may as well wait. He hasn't left yet. Why should he have right away? So the guy coming in has right away. The guy leaving needs to stand by and wait until the other guy comes in. Okay, common sense. He can't exactly slow down. He's going to sink. So um, that's your um, jetty stuff and your skiing. Now, some of the terminology is confusing, like trim. People go, what's trim in a boat? Trim is it's not, the, um, not the bit of rubber or vinyl on the, on the outside of the boat. Okay, Tr trim is long ways in a boat. So trim, is, people say, I can do it with a motor. You can do it with a motor, but if you've got a little dinghy, you, can't, you can just put that second person down the back, that'll trim the bow up. So trim means moving the boat long ways, okay? So if you trim the bow up, when would you do that? You do that in what we call a following C, okay? A following C, C and swell, everyone gets confused about this too. I'm getting a bit off track, but I might as well do it while I'm here. The difference between a C and a swell, like wind creates all the energy on the water. The longer the wind blows, as in a day or a week, the stronger it blows, 10 knots or 40 knots, and the distance over the water the wind blows. So 
it's what they call the fetch. Okay, so all these things create more energy, more energy equals bigger waves. The seas when it's localized, it's happening now. Like you know, you're down the beach and all of a sudden, Perth's a good example, sea breeze comes in, everyone goes home. Because all of a sudden there's white caps everywhere. It's not nice. So that's a sea, it's localized. A swell, on the other hand, it used to be a sea, but it's traveled away from the wind. So a swell, you know, Carnarvon or Bali even, if you've been up there, you know, it's 32 degrees every day. One day it's flat. The next day you wake up and walk out the front and there's these big rolling lines coming through. Because what's happened is we've had the bad weather down here in Perth and all of a sudden that energy's travelled up past the wind and it just keeps going until it hits land. Okay, But while it keeps going, it cleans up and turns into what we call a swell. So a sea will break into any depth of water because the, the wind's pushing it over now, it's localised. Whereas a swell needs the bottom of the ocean to break. So a swell won't break in 200 metres of water, whereas a sea will. If it's windy, it's going to break all over the place. So that's the difference. So if we've got a following sea, we would trim the bow up. So the propeller's down this end. So when I drop down these waves, because it could be breaking, if I drop down these waves, I keep the back end where the propeller is planted in the water. That's where my steering is. Okay, i got better control. If you're just normal and drop down, then the back end lifts up. Okay, and then your prop loses grip in the water and you lose your steering okay so we trim the bow up with the following C so that's trim and then there's another thing they talk about in their healing now this is more to do with yachts really but healing is um, like a, you know how a yacht will heal over one side when it's sailing okay but what we're talking about here is healing from side to side okay so the boat's rocking from side to side so it's not the wind that's doing it Otherwise, it would just be one side. So what's causing the boat to heel badly from side to side? You've just loaded it incorrectly. So you, little boats usually don't have that option. You know, we've got to put all the gear down low. But this is for bigger boats generally. You know, you might have a, let's say those 25-foot flybridges. They're not, not a huge boat. They had a flybridge for some reason. Okay, you got five guys upstairs, no one downstairs. It might be okay in protected waters in the river or something like that. But as soon as you go out into the ocean, now it's top heavy, goes from side to side. So where do you put the weight? Down low. You know, it's no different than a canoe. What happens when you stand up in a canoe? It tries to tip you off because you've raised the center of gravity. So when you load boats, you want to lower them low as you can. And down the middle, if you can't do it in the middle, you need to balance one side with the other. You know, um, but you want to get them as low as you can. That keeps your center of gravity low. That's why yachts, you know, that's why they don't tip over. They might heel over, but there's a big keel full of lead or whatever it may be under the water that's planting it to the water. If it didn't have that, then bang, it'd over and go. But it's that extra weight down below that lowers the center of gravity for the yacht. Okay? So that's healing side to side. And then there's another thing, chart datum. Now, chart datum, there's a chart there, but it's too far away, you can't see. But there's numbers all over it. It's a depth of water. So if you look up your marine chart on your GPS or whatever it may be, um, all over it will have soundings, the depth of water. So, you know, and it's always, it could be, let's say, that's meant to be a three, three zero. Or over here it could be two six. Okay, that means 3.3 metres even, 3.0. This means 2.6 metres of water, okay? So all over the, your chart, this is chart datum, you've got this depth of water. Now, it can't always be 2.6 metres of water because the tide comes in and the tide goes out. And then, you know, the tide varies from day to day, how high the high tide was and how low the tide, low tide was. So what does it mean? It, it means, okay, we're meant to use this with a tide chart. Now, most of us don't have use tide charts down the bottom of WA, but if you're from the top of WA, you'll use them because... You know, it's part of life. You have big tides. Now, let's say we get rid of that. Some of you, if you haven't seen a tide chart, you know, I'll just do a dummy one here. Let's say, um, I don't know, 6 o'clock in the morning. It might be low tide, 0 0.2 metres. Okay, and then let's say it was, I don't know, 
Okay, so I've just made that up, obviously. So that's just telling me, okay, the lowest the tide got today was at 6 in the morning. And how low was it? 0.2 of a metre. Okay, then high tide was 4.30. So the tide came in all day. It peaked at 4.30 in the afternoon. It peaked at 1 metre. So it took, what, from 6 in the morning to 4.30, it raised 0.8 of a metre, the difference between this and this. Okay. So assuming this was my local port, let's say it's Fremantle, okay, and I looked at my chart of Fremantle, and there was a spot I wanted to go to, and it was 2.6 metres chart datum. If I got over there at low tide at 6 in the morning, I should add this to this. It gives me 2.8 metres there at low tide. If I got over there at high tide at 4.30 in the afternoon, I still add it. I'm just adding more at high tide. I add this to this. It gives me 3.6 metres. Okay? So it doesn't matter what your chart datum is. It doesn't matter whether it's low or high tide. You just add it on top of your chart datum. Okay, so when they make these marine charts up for the whole world, it's like ground zero, you know, it's a benchmark for them. And then we use our tide charts to add on top of chart datum, okay? Um, like I said, it's not a big deal down here, we don't have much tide. But if you go up to Broome, you might have, you know, eight metres of difference in six hours. The water goes in and out, in and out, you can see it move. Okay, so different world up there. But that, that